Hey, my friends, and welcome to The Nicole Crank Show. It's a beautiful day outside, and we're talking about something that has affected every single one of us. Everybody been hurt. Everybody been pained in some way. And then we get to figure out how to forgive. And I have a friend of mine who got done really wrong, and she said, you know, the problem is, if they do me right, I'm gonna have to forgive every one of them, and it's gonna be like dying a thousand deaths. So today we're talking about, is it worth dying a thousand deaths? Because the answer is yes. The only way to find freedom in ourselves and from our past is to find it in forgiveness. It's not even easy to say, I forgive you to somebody sometimes, let alone actually do the whole thing. Like you say, oh, no, I forgive you, but really you don't because like they did that. But you gotta let go and let God and move on. Unforgiveness is the thing that will anchor you to your past. So we're gonna cut the ties. How are we gonna do that? Well, I have a guest friend with me today. Her name is Alex Seeley. She is in Nashville. She is an author. She is a vocalist. She is a preacher. She is amazing. She's from Australia, which is awesome because I love the Australian accent. I think that was, I think that was British, but don't judge me. But she has quite a story of how unforgiveness, all the way back from childhood, began to affect every area of her life until she finally dealt with it. What do you need to deal with? What weight are you carrying? What baggage have you been toting that if you just let it go, you can run free? I believe today is gonna to be life changing. Alex's story is so impactful and I believe you guys are gonna relate on so many levels. So today we're going from the pain to the promise in a real raw and organic way. Are you ready to get free? Let's go. Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. I thought my life was over when I got molested as a child. Then I got pregnant at 17 and my drug addict ex-husband held a gun to my head. But only God could give me the life that I have today and you can have that too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. Passionate, feisty, fun. A doctor or a nurse? I had a Starbucks. <laughs> Can I pass? <laughs> I don't dance. Yes. Okay. Guys, we're in Nashville again. I feel like I'm on the corner of heaven, and if you think you hear chickens in the background, you're not crazy, you actually do hear chickens in the background. We might go, we might go visit them in a little while if we're feeling a little brave. And I'm here with Alex Seeley, who I am fangirling about just a little bit, because I've never been in the same room with you. Pastor of Belonging Co, Australian with that accent that makes her sound way smarter than me, but she is anyway. So, <laughs> uh, and then just so full of wisdom, knowledge, revival, the power of God. And you've got some edge to your story that's gonna cut a little bit. So if you're ready to be cut on today, um, if you've had some issues that might be holding you back, okay, we are, we are gonna totally dive in. And you're in ministry. Yep full-time adult life, but childhood was maybe, there were some things in childhood, it wasn't always. So just take yeah. us on a little journey. Yeah, well, great to be here and it's great to be here with you. Um, yeah, I think I think we all have a story, right? We've, everyone's got something that they've had to overcome. Mm -hmm. Maybe not, and you're one of the lucky ones, but um, I just know that in the, the ministry length that I've been you know, serving people, that everyone has a story because mm -hmm. I think the enemy has an assignment with each and every one of us to steal, kill, and destroy us. And he's going to use whatever method. And sometimes he goes after children mm -hmm. and he will go after us quite young in our belief system. And sometimes it's a fractured family. Sometimes it's abuse. Sometimes it's neglect, abandonment, you know, whatever. And for me, even though uh, I was raised in a godly home, I had Christian parents and we were raised in church. Mm -hmm. It wasn't 
always great behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that you just, most of us have to be honest with our childhood. And I love my mother and father, like with my whole heart. And uh, I'm in great relationship with my mum. But, you know, there were some fractures in her own life as yeah. a young woman mm -hmm. that she never dealt with. And I think mm -hmm. when you're a child, you think your parents can hang the moon. Right. You think they know everything. You yeah. think they're your protector and your guide. And, and so when there's fractures as a young kid, you don't actually understand that people have emotional problems <laughs> or yeah. that they've had a past history. And right. so... My mum had a lot of fractures in her childhood, mm -hmm. um, a lot of physical abuse, verbal abuse, and just a, a lot of disappointment in mm -hmm. her life. And so she was married young. She mm -hmm. didn't really want to get married young. She was an immigrant at 19. She married sort of to get out of a situation and so got pregnant really quickly, um, had four children, even though she only wanted two. And so there's so much disappointment. So by the yeah. time I come along, I'm baby number four. Okay. When mum only wanted two and she didn't even want them that young. So she's 30 years of age now and she's about to have her fourth. It's not that she didn't want me. It's just that, you know, we're women now. Like you, you think you get to a certain age or you get to a certain number and you're like, I, I don't think Four I could. Four babies by 30 is a lot yeah, for anybody. For anybody, right? <laughs> so I'm giving context because I don't want people to think she was a cruel, horrible human because she right. wasn't. She was broken and fractured. But when yeah. you're a child on the other side of it, you don't understand that. Mm -hmm. So the enemy used her brokenness and her fracturedness mm -hmm. and her, she was loose with her words. So she would say things like, we didn't want you. You were the mistake. Mm. You were the, you know, the, the person that wasn't meant to happen. And so as a young child... Wow that would sit and mm -hmm. it would cut deep because mm -hmm. it was like, I'm being tolerated. Yeah. I'm not celebrated. So for me, it was very damaging to mm -hmm. who I was growing up. And so um, I had a lot of brokenness in my mm -hmm. own life. So, you know, from the age of 11, I developed an eating disorder really young mm -hmm. and I hated myself. Like mm -hmm. I hated who I was. I hated because I didn't feel like I was loved, you know? Yeah. And even though my mum was nurturing mm -hmm domestically, mm -hmm. emotionally, there was a, you know, a, a lot of void and there was just a lot of confusion. And so it broke me and the enemy lie was, you're not wanted, yeah. you're a reject, you're stupid. And if he can stop you then, if he can get that broken record playing itself in your head, he doesn't yep. even have to contend with you. No. You can stop yourself, he doesn't have totally. to stop you. Totally, and that was what was happening. Yeah. And so even though I got saved at 11, from 11 mm -hmm. to 20, there was a big fracture there. And, mm. and I was dealing with unforgiveness. I didn't know it was that. Yeah. I, I was bitter, I was angry, I was, but it all went back to me. If you'd met me at 16, 17, you would've thought I was the life of the party. You would've thought my life I had it all together, but internally I was a mess. How did you, how did you begin yeah. to come out of that? Yeah, I think I hit a crossroads at 20. I, I just remember I was, church on the weekends, living a total opposite life during the week, because I was trying to figure out is mm -hmm. how can a loving God mm -hmm. have allowed me to go through what I did? So I was in this wrestle, but it got to about 20 and I was just depressed. I was mm -hmm. angry. I was, um, I'd, I'd chosen men in my life that were not good for me. And you know, so I'm literally in this quandary of emotion and my life's not really going anywhere. And I remember just falling on my face before God and saying, God, if you're really real, you're, I, I, I don't want to play church because mm -hmm. I've watched that and that's not working. If you are real, mm -hmm. I give you my whole heart. Mm -hmm. And he says, well, that's good because you haven't given me your whole heart. You gave mm -hmm. me 50% of your heart. Wow. I need the wounded parts. I need the broken parts. Yeah. I need the, the scared parts. I need it all. Wow. And if you trust me and follow me every step of the way, I'll give you life and life abundantly. Okay, the Go. first to person to unroll this toilet paper roll all right. wins, but I'm gonna add another level to the challenge. Then we have to wipe the other person's <laughs> invisible tears. Are you ready? All right. On your mark. Get set. Go. Go. Oh, I think I started early. <laughs> That's all right. I think I cheated. I oh, didn't gosh. read the sheet. Oh, my gosh. I mean. Oh, golly. Mine's way behind you. Oh, it's. <laughs> Do -do -do -do. Holy cow. There's a lot of. You know what? It never feels like there's so much toilet paper on the roll at home. It just feels like it's gone. Oh. She did it. <laughs> she did it. I thought I had a really good system. 
What's your dream? Does it seem impossible? What if I told you I have a simple five-step plan that will help you make that dream a reality? Come on, I've spent far too many years of my life feeling stuck, stuck in my circumstances, being frustrated by another failed attempt to reach a goal. But when I researched and developed this elementary five-step process, it changed my life. Now I'm literally living my dreams. I wrote the book Goal Getters because I want to help you live your dreams too. How? By reaching your goals. You can start achieving your goals today by visiting nicolecrank.com forward slash goals and you can get my Goal Getters book. I've heard it said that a dream is a goal that never gets written down. But if you write down your dream, it becomes a goal. I want to show you how to write your goals in a way that's scientifically, psychologically, and biblically proven to help you achieve them. Together, we'll develop a vision plan, action steps, and goals that you can actually measure and assess. By following the steps in the book, I'll help you make a plan that will allow you to commit to accomplishing your goals. No more New Year's resolutions, no more failed plans, just attainable goals. So are you ready to change your life and become a goal getter? Go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash goals today and get your copy of Goal Getters. Your dreams are calling. There's the big things. There's the little things, and there's the things that you think never, ever, ever, am I gonna be able to forgive that? I mean, because can you even believe it happened? And how am I supposed to take that out of me? It's a part of my past, it's, it's woven into who I am, it's part of my fabric of my memory, right? I remember trying to pour out so much forgiveness and getting stonewalled, and I felt drained out and shut down. I felt like enemy score one, Nicole, nothing, and yet there was nothing left. So what do you do? How do you forgive the big things and the small things? Let's start with the big things first, and your question might be why. I mean, why do I even have to let this go in the first place? And let's just start with unforgiveness as an anchor that is gonna keep you in the midst of your pain and your past for as long as you allow it. And I know allow it is a really strong term and you think, what do you mean allow it? I'm not allowing this. Well, I've heard it said that unforgiveness is like drinking poison and hoping that somebody else dies. We're allowing it. And that's one of the very first things we have to just come to grips with and look at, put on our big girl pants, put on our big boy pants and go, okay, I am stuck in this place because I need to let go of the chain. When I was writing my book, I Will Thrive, God told me a statement that I really wasn't thrilled with. And I had to kind of dig into it to like make sure he was right because I mean, of course he had to be wrong if I didn't like the statement, right? That's not true at all. <laughs> he said, I'm not obligated to heal a hurt that you don't give me. I was like, what do you mean, God? That's kind of awful of you, right? And he's like, no. That's my trusting you. That's my giving you free will. If you bring something to me, I'll heal it. But if you keep it away from me, what is unforgiveness? It's keeping it away from God. It's holding it all to ourselves. It's trying to shoulder this burden by ourselves. But when we finally break down and go, I can't do this. I can't get it out of me. I can't stop thinking about it. God's in heaven going, pick me, give me a try. Take it to me, talk to me all about it. Tell me the details. Tell me why it hurts. Tell me where it hurts. Tell me how it hurts. Let me listen to you. Let me understand you. And then let me give you the strength to forgive. And then there's a whole nother thing. Once you start really wrestling with getting these big things and forgiving them, it's not everything is big. I'll get into that in one second, but first I want to quote you a scripture. It's in Mark. It's in Mark 11. It talks about mountain moving faith and how you say to the mountain be removed be cast and see no doubt in your heart but these things that you say will come to pass and then it says and as you stand praying forgive so that i can forgive you so you might be thinking i'm looking at a mountain of forgiveness i'm looking at layers of forgiveness i'm looking at thousands of times of forgiveness i'm here to tell you it's worth it because it's how you get forgiven and you might think, well, I have forgiven them, but then I woke up the next day and I felt the exact same way. You know what that means? You're human. 
I know, I, it's hard to pill to swallow. You are just human from the top of your head to the soles of your feet, but the good news is you're surrounded by seven billion of us. We are all human together. It is part of the human condition. So you know what you do? You wake up in the morning and you forgive them again. And you know what will happen? There'll be one morning you wake up and you don't have to forgive them. You get to go two days before you have to do it again. And then three days and then four days and then five days. And then something can be birthed on the inside of you. But I'm here to tell you with God, you can really forgive them. Don't let forgettable things become unforgivable things. Don't let something small turn into something big. Sometimes unforgiveness is so sneaky all you have to do is start with the words that say, I'm sorry, even when you weren't wrong. You can do this in your life. With God, all things are possible. Do you want forgiveness? You have to forgive. So much swings on the hinges of the doors of forgiveness, happiness, peace, joy. Happiness, peace, joy. Happiness, peace enjoy. You can do this. You can forgive them. And if you have to forgive them again in the morning, it's okay. Just do that. So how do people, whether they're in the situation, divorced from the situation, yep. moved away from their parents, their parents have gone to heaven, yep. how do they find freedom yeah. and forgiveness? You have to go to the source, the one who first forgave us. I don't think you can forgive until you've actually had a revelation of true forgiveness from the Lord. Mm -hmm. It is very hard to forgive without Christ. And I've seen people do it, mm -hmm. but not to the full freedom mm -hmm. that you can only get in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because then when you start to discover, hold on a minute, the scriptures really say that we, we can't hold unforgiveness towards others because He forgave us. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not going to listen to our prayers mm -hmm. if we don't forgive first. Like He, because he ha He's the perfect Father, yeah. right? He's the perfect Savior. He was the perfect human. He did nothing wrong. And yet He forgave mm -hmm. His abusers, His betrayers, mm -hmm. His violators. And if Jesus Christ, who is perfect without spot, blemish, fault, if He chose to forgive us when we didn't deserve it, He loved us. So when I put Jesus as my measuring stick, mm -hmm. I can't, I don't have one excuse to say, yeah, but yeah. Th there is no, but my circumstance is different to yours. His measure is so much greater, yet He has got more forgiveness for us. So the more you're in love with Jesus, mm -hmm. the more easier it is to forgive. And then when you discover why your parents act that way, the love that you have for them mm -hmm. is so potent and powerful. And that's where the healing comes. Mm. Because so many people resent and want revenge and mm. justice. But God got me to see her mm. like a little girl like I was. Yeah. And it, it's no one sets out to be mean to your kids. No. It just happens that way because you're broken. And so when I was able to see her as a broken little girl, I was able to love her and forgive her. I actually fully forgave mm -hmm. when I had my daughter, actually. I was 30 years of age and I was still bound by an eating disorder mm -hmm. from the age of 11 and I was in ministry. And so don't think all pastors are mm -hmm. perfect because they are not and they never will be. Mm -hmm. I was hiding. Mm -hmm. brokenness. Yeah. And, um, but I remember we were doing this breaking the generational curses in our staff and we started to list all these things. And when it came to my eating disorder, I could feel the, the power of God on me. And I remember the Holy Spirit whispering in my heart and He said, Alex, you will never take people further than you're willing to go. So you may be a good orator of the Word, mm -hmm. because the Word doesn't return void. Mm -hmm. But you will not see the breakthrough in people's lives mm -hmm. until you break through yourself. Because yeah. right now you're being fraudulent. Mm -hmm. You're a fraud. Mm -hmm. And so it was that day mm -hmm. that I said, okay, I, got I don't know how to get rid of this because mm -hmm. I'm so angry mm -hmm. and I I'm bound by this. And he said, forgive you, Mum. Mm -hmm. And I just went, so you're saying my eating disorder is attached 
to my unforgiveness. Mm. He's like, mm-hmm. your mm. eating disorder is a symptom mm. of the pain. Mm-hmm. You control everything mm. because you weren't able to control what happened to you. It's the body. It's the yeah, human that's response. That's right. To a spiritual problem. Yeah. So that's when I f- truly forgave. Yeah. I truly forgave, and the freedom. Oh my goodness, the freedom. I. I never understood freedom until I was finally free. <laughs> I thought I knew freedom. As you said the word freedom, it even caused me, you say it with such peace and yeah. conviction, it caused me to exhale. Yeah, and I'm free to be me and I don't have to hold bitterness anymore. And now I start to see my mum with the eyes of love. Mm. And now I get to build this relationship with her. And she's with me now here in Tennessee. She, she's nearly 80 and she made all the way the trek over here to, to be with me. And you know, like that, that is reconciliation. That's yes, what God wants. Yeah. And so I'm now not able to pass that on to my children, you know? Okay, you broke it. I broke it. I broke the pattern. And, so and, it can be done. And they can break it. You can break yes. it too. Yeah. So I want to ask you, Alex, yeah. if you will pray for people yeah. to have, I think it, forgiveness takes courage. Yeah, it does. Because somehow holding on to that for some reason in our human, mm. in our flesh experience, it makes us feel like it'll never happen to me again if yes. I hold on to this. Yeah. That they, we can break the security that our yeah. mind, that our brain has put in us yeah. to hold on to this thing and have to let go, let yeah. God and get the freedom from yeah. that. Can you pray for them? Yeah, absolutely. So right now, would you just close your eyes? And I just want to pray over you so that you would find freedom in this moment. Father, I thank you. I thank you for every single person watching. Thank you. God, you know their story. You know the pain that they are carrying. You know how deep the wound goes. But God, you... You were beaten, you were bruised, you were put on a cross for all of our transgressions, for all of our iniquities. You were you were bruised, you were beaten so that we could actually have life. You carried shame for us so that you could deliver us from shame. And so right now in the power of Jesus, the blood of Jesus that cleanses us and sets us free, would you come into that room and into their hearts right now? and breathe life again. Mm -hmm. Would you show them how much you love them? And so in that, would you help them forgive? And as they release that wound, they release forgiveness towards their abuser. Mm -hmm. God, that you would come in and flood them with love. Yes. That is so supernatural and so powerful that then they would be able to forgive those who've hurt them. God, I pray for true freedom to come into their homes right now. In your name we pray, amen. Take a look at your life right now. Do you like where you're going? Are the people in your life helping you get to where you wanna be? Have you ever heard two people talking at the lunch table and wished you could pull up a chair and just learn? This is your opportunity. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Studies have shown that you are the sum of the people that you hang out with. I mean, we all need people in our lives coaching us, teaching us, mentoring us, cheering us on, and making us into better people. And that is why I created the Circle of Friends. It's a chance for us to connect and increase the level that we live on. Here's what you get when you go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle and become a partner. Every month we'll have live coaching sessions, workshops with Zoom calls between us where you get to ask questions, engage, learn, or I'll bring on a guest influencer like Joel Osteen, Christine Kane, Mike Todd, Sarah Jakes Roberts. They'll share some of the most valuable lessons they've learned, just like you were sitting at that table. We've got a Best of Nicole library with a bunch of teachings. And best of all, you're not just a friend, you're a partner based in daily prayer, getting weekly emails. And your monthly contribution is a seed that helps us be on TV and provide books to prisons, recovery homes, and people who need them. If you're ready to get in a group of friends who will help you be all that God made you to be, and be a difference to others at the same time, this is it. For less than the cost of buying bubblegum, you can change the course of your life. Just go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle and become a member today. Trust me, you'll be so glad you did. Wow, what a story. What a day. Yeah, that's what freedom smells like. You know, the Bible says that my people perish from a lack of knowledge. What you don't know is affecting you in ways that you don't even know are related, like sickness and anxiety and depression related to some of this stuff that's bitterness stuffed down on the inside of us. And if we can't get to the root of the problem, we can't get the root out. 
I actually do a ton of work with this in my circle of friends. It's a group that I meet with every month on Zoom. We deal with coping mechanisms, triggers, self-awareness, limiting beliefs. Oh my gosh, we deal with so many things. And, and you might wanna check it out. It's at NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle, especially if you have some unforgiveness issues from your past, which I did. Molestation, rape. <laughs> I was left by my husband who got addicted to drugs, ended up bankrupt and foreclosed on as a single mom. Hey, I get your unforgiveness issues, but I know the freedom on the other side. Did you even know that unforgiveness affects your physical health, your mental health? That's why it's so important we get to the root of this thing and we live the life of freedom that God has intended for us. And once we find freedom, then we can shift our focus and begin to help other people around us become free. Make sure you share this episode with a friend today. I don't know if you're on YouTube, you can share, you wanna hit record on your DVR. But did you know that there's an opportunity for you to make an even bigger difference? You know, most people pay to be on TV. We actually pay a lot of money to be on most every network that we're on. Can you believe that? So how do we get the good news? How do we get freedom? How do we walk through autism and dementia and marital affairs, emotional affairs, being single, finding freedom for forgiveness? How do we walk people through this? We are on five continents in this whole world. We are on national networks, local networks, secular networks, Christian networks, reaching hundreds of thousands of people every single week. Matter of fact, Kinsey Clark, who's in Nigeria, if you're watching right now, Kinsey, hello. She actually wrote us and said that she watches the Nicole Crank Show every single week. And here are the words that really just slayed me. She said, it's one of the best parts of her week. It's been such a blessing to her after watching several episodes. She even wrote a song called Hi God, which is based on the book I wrote. I mean, how cool is that? We're making such a difference in the lives of young people, grown people, married people, single people, people in Africa, people in the US, people in Europe, in the Philippines, in Australia, in Norway, in Denmark, and Faroe Islands. Here's what I'm asking. If God has made a difference in your life through this television program, would you consider partnering with me to reach more people all over the world? How do you do that? You can go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash give. A dollar, $10, $25, $50, $100. Every month makes a huge difference and helps us reach people like Kenzie in Nigeria. People who just need something, an answer. Hey God, are you listening? He's like, yeah, I am. And I'm talking through that weird girl in the, in the green suit. The other way you can help us is go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash circle. It's a high value partnership. It's $27 and 77 cents a month. You get Zoom calls, weekly emails, true partnership, two way partnership. And it's a seed. You have seed in the ground to help other people. I just want to say thank you in advance for helping us reach people with the good news and with freedom. I'll see you next week. This is why we work together. Oh. I love order. Uh. <laughs> I, love, I love order, can't you tell? <laughs> I love order. <laughs> I, love, I, I clean as I cook, guys. I clean as I cook. I can't stand mess.